are different terms that go around uh, referring to what happens with the heart. The, the medical term that for the condition we're discussing is myocardial infarction, and that's damage to the heart caused by blockage of one of the arteries that supplies blood to the heart, what were called the coronary arteries, and Anil referred to those earlier. And generally when doctors speak of a heart attack, that's what we're referring to is a myocardial infarction. So just over a third of all deaths in Canada are due to cardiovascular disease, and of those, one uh, very important part component is this AMI, that's acute myocardial infarction, and that accounts for 10% of, of all deaths in this, uh, in this country. So it's a very huge health problem. We've heard the word uh, STEMI before, and STEMI is, stands for ST elevation myocardial infarction. So it's a particular type of heart attack, a particular type of myocardial infarction that generally has more damage and higher complications than other types of non-ST elevation heart attacks, and certainly in the short term, uh, a higher, uh, higher death rate, what we call mortality. Although this may be larger than other types of heart attacks and may have more complications than other types of heart attacks and can lead to more death than other types of heart attacks, it is diagnosable early. And of course, if it can be diagnosed early, it can be treated early. So that uh, the, the condition is, as I said, is highly treatable uh, by restoring blood flow to the blocked artery that's causing the problem in the first place. Uh, so um, as we uh, see here, heart attacks are caused by total blockages of these arteries of the heart, the coronary arteries. They lie on the surface of the heart. They're the first branches that come off of the main blood vessel running from the heart called the aorta. Uh, and they supply blood flow to the heart. They're what supplies, they're, they carry the blood, the blood that supplies oxygen and nutrients to the heart muscle so that it can continue to contract. As we see, we see a, just a schematic, a picture of an artery uh, here uh, that has developed a, a blockage. Most blockages start as what we call plaques, which, uh, which is build up of cholesterol and scar tissue and other, other, uh, other things as well. And those plaques may go on to rupture and form blood clot. And that's that process of blood clot that usually takes this from being a partial blockage to a total blockage. And that's, what at, that's when the heart attack starts. What we've shown here is that this actually picture shows a fairly uh, small uh, heart attack, significant, but not, uh, not that large. But of course, if you block this artery up here, uh, then you uh, may involve or it will involve actually a much larger area of the heart. So how then do we treat it once it's uh, uh, diagnosed? Well the key is of course to unblock that blocked artery and restore the blood flow to that area of the heart that has been deprived. And that will restore the flow of oxygen and other nutrients and allow that heart muscle, first of all, it will stop any, any further process of, uh, of dying, of tissue death of the heart muscle allow that which has been damaged but not irreversibly damaged to start to uh, recuperate and contract and recover. The key component <coughs> is to restore blood flow down that artery. That is what will limit the size of the heart attack and prevent all of those other complications that we discussed earlier. Prevent the uh, mortality, prevent the heart failure, prevent the, uh, the problems with heart rhythm abnormalities and so on. This is certainly the best way of treating a heart attack. Um, by doing what we call coronary angioplasty. Now angioplasty is a procedure where we open up blocked arteries through a variety of means, but most commonly by inflating little balloons in the area of blockage and then leaving a little metal mesh tubes called stents, which then hold the artery open. And the moment you do a balloon inflation in an artery to open it up, and restore just that initial blood flow is the moment at which the heart attack stops happening. The way we do this is, of course, is that our balloons and our little metal tubes called stents are on the ends of uh, long skinny plastic tubes called catheters, and we advance those to the heart by either inserting, by inserting them usually in an artery that runs down to the leg and then threading them up to the heart, or sometimes in an artery that runs to the arm as well. We can do either way, but it's usually a little bit faster to go in from the leg, so that's why we, uh, we choose that route, because time is of the essence. So we 
Uh, we open up the artery, uh, deploy a uh, little metal tube uh, on a balloon, deflate the balloon, remove it, the little metal tube stays in, and the artery goes from being blocked to being nice and uh, fully open. Angioplasty, uh, what, what we sometimes refer to as PCI, um, uh, percutaneous coronary intervention, um, is, uh, is a superb treatment for heart attacks. It is unquestionably the best treatment when it can be delivered quickly. And that is the key point. The results of what we call reperfusion therapy, that is opening up the artery to reestablish blood flow to the heart, are very time dependent. If you can reestablish blood flow within about two hours of the onset of the heart attack, there is almost always very little damage uh, of, any, of any permanent kind to the heart. Um, uh, and as you go on to, uh, to greater and greater delays, the amount of permanent damage will increase. We'll still do the, uh, do the angioplasties on people who have had chest pain even for 12 hours or more, but it would be far, far better far better, it is far better, to do it as early as possible and get to it as fast as possible. So um, the usual process, um, however, for people who have chest pain, uh, in, it includes that they develop chest pain at home, and then for some reason they wait for a while. Then call EMS, um, EMS uh, re respond very quickly, and take them to the emergency room where they'll go through a process of being registered, being triaged, triaged, moved to a hospital stretcher from the emergency stretcher, be assessed by one of the expert nurses in the emergency room, be assessed by one of the emergency room physicians. Tests may be ordered, certainly at least an ECG and often blood tests, a diagnosis made, and then we in the heart catheterization lab are called. Um, and if, uh, if it's after hours, then the heart catheterization lab team will come in and then we'll take the patient to the cath lab and perform the angioplasty. But of course, this is a series of sequential <laughs> steps. And if each of these steps takes just even a few minutes, you can see that the time delay is going to be enormous. And all of that time, the heart is being more and more damaged and more and more permanent damage. The absolutely best process saves huge amounts of time. EMS is called, they arrive, they do an ECG, immediately they're on the phone while they're also treating and stabilizing the uh, patient. As soon as we get the phone call, if it's after hours, we, uh, we call in our cath lab team, we all head in immediately. At the same time, our security people here are being notified to unlock the catheterization lab. Our CCU nurses uh, are going down to meet the paramedic team in the emergency room when they arrive. Everything is happening simultaneously so that as soon as the patient gets here, they can be taken directly into the catheterization lab, have their angioplasty immediately. We saved enormous amounts of time in the process, and that's how you save heart muscle, that's how you prevent permanent damage, and that's how you save lives and prevent a lot of illness uh, after a, uh, a heart attack. We, we try to, um, to get the artery opened within 90 minutes of the first, what we call first medical contact, the first time that the patient is in touch with someone, a medical professional, either the paramedics, uh, if, they, if they call EMS, or the triage nurse in the emergency room. That is our goal, to get it within 90, uh, within 90 minutes. We have been able to achieve that 94% of the time with the STEMI bypass, and as I said, that's patients coming from all over the place, uh, um, and uh, that is a, a world-class <coughs> result. Uh, there are almost, I, I'm not actually aware of any data published actually that indicates the times that are that frequently achieved, and our mean time, our average time uh, is 68, 68 minutes. And uh, so these are amazing times, and that is a lot of patients uh, benefit from this.